going on guys? Zach Ebnesh here from the Underground Strength Gym and the SSPC certification. In this video, I want to talk about books, reading, and kind of cross-referencing materials so you can learn. Even from things in the past that might be slightly outdated or they are outdated and there's been newer information, you want to look back at some of this older stuff from 70s, 80s, even prior and cross-reference it with current stuff because there's a lot we could learn. So I've got this book right here, guys. It's called Bounding to the Top. Right here on the cover is Pete Koch. And um, Pete Koch is the guy, um, you know, that fought Clint Eastwood in that movie Heartbreak Ridge. They called him Swede. He was a monster. So Pete was an NFL football player and also was... Um, a uh, Maryland football player, which is where this was this was all done, okay? So this book, again, is from 1980. So some of you coaches um, watching this, listening to this, may not have even been born back then. I think a big mistake is you're only looking at kind of current training methods. But here's something that's really cool that I like. And it was the discussion of off-season training, the deep, what I call the deep off-season and <clears throat> Coach Costello talks about he learned this from one of the Russian track and field coaches who had coached gold medal winners. And he said they did something called Spartan training. So even if you were a track and field thrower, discus, shot put, versus maybe a uh, triple jump or high jumper, they went through this off-season GPP phase. They didn't call it GPP here. They called it Russian Spartan training. And this was shared from a Russian coach. And he coached multiple high jump world record holders. So it said Spartan training is used by all national Soviet athletes. It is done at a training site in the mountains in the late summer or early fall. A specialist is assigned to each athlete. The training consists mostly of overall physical fitness training. And I'm going to uh, expand on this a little bit, but I want you to understand that in Russia and in the old Soviet Union, a um, sports coach would get their master's degree or a PhD in the sport and in like a sub section of that sport. So if I was getting my PhD in wrestling, I might get a PhD in the headlock. I might get a PhD in the left side um, high crotch takedown drill. I might get, it, you know, if I'm a weightlifter, I might get a PhD in isometric training. And so they would find these super narrow niches and dial it down. And now the sport coaches were not just world-class in teaching the sports skill. They were world-class in the world of sport performance, strength, and conditioning. And so here would be a sample Spartan day, which is... Um, my father shared some of this stuff with me when he grew up in Romania, what he saw the Romanian national athletes doing. They begin the day with an early morning, 30-minute cross-country run. So running through the woods, mountains, you know, uphill, downhill. Then they have breakfast. Then they have lectures and film study. Then they go through a short training session of about 25 minutes of plyometrics, jump training, and medicine ball training. Then they have lunch. Then they get to rest, take a nap. Then they're back outside, go through obstacle course training. That obstacle course might be set up. It might be, um, if you've ever seen Coach Mike Bergner, when he was teaching phys ed, they had something called the patch. They had all these telephone poles set up. It looked like a military, a marine obstacle course. They'll do that for 20 minutes. Then they'll do some sprinting of short distances, 50s, 80s, 150 meter sprints. Then calisthenics and gymnastics, tumbling, hand walking, cartwheels, um, partner gymnastic type movements. Then they go through a swim, okay? 2,000 meter swim, and I'm gonna make a little note here. Any of the swimmers I've trained are tremendously strong. I'm assuming because of the volume of work that they do, they're, it's amazing how quickly they put on muscle. They're extremely strong, their level of Fitness and physical preparation is extremely high. They've been some of the toughest athletes I've worked with. 
Um, after the 2,000 meter swim, they do hill running, uphill running, and it says climbing trees. What that probably means is going, you know, over obstacle courses, jumping over fall, falling down trees, rope climbing, things of that nature. And then after they do all these uphill runs and obstacle courses, they start doing bounding for time and distance for five minutes. So bounding is kind of, you know, it's plyometrics, it's, it's shock training uh, and distance. So what that makes me think if they're doing it for five minutes, they're maybe doing lower level plyometrics, jumping slash bouncing drills to build up the uh, body's physical fitness, overall physical fitness and build a wider base. After that, they rest again and prepare for dinner. And after dinner, they study film and have classwork. They have homework to do, probably assessing their own weak areas and what, and, and what kind of review they have from their meetings with coaches that day. Then at the end of the night, it is weight training and more medicine ball work, and that's done on an every other day basis. So that was what was shared with Coach Castell from one of the Russian track and field coaches. So he was breaking it down into how we could do that in America. If you have studied what the Soviets did and the Russians did back in the day, many could say, well, they won because of the drugs. The real truth is, guys, in those years of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, um, of course there were drugs, but their knowledge of training was so, so advanced. So this is a great book right here, Soviet Training and Recovery Methods. And this book was written in, does it say, 1990 by Rick Brunner. And so I read the book, Soviet Sport, Secret of Soviet Sport and Fitness Training with Dr. Yessis. That book was written in 74. Now it's called Secret of Russian Sport. And so in 1974, what they were doing in the 70s, so now it's the year 2021, some 50 years later almost, what they were doing was decades and decades ahead of what I had seen. I read that book in 2003. And so it, they were just decades ahead, okay? I don't know if the drugs completely give people such an advantage, but I look at, you know, the training. Other things I will look at is old bodybuilding books. Because a lot of the athletes today don't have a base. They don't have this calisthenics gymnastics base. We get many freshmen who can't do push-ups. I've seen athletes at the Division I level who can't do a proper bodyweight squat. And so there's always things and books and work that you can cross-reference and learn from and study and, um, you know, you know, whether you're younger or quote unquote older like me, there's many places and people to learn from. But what's interesting is some coaches are only learning modern day where some of the strongest and most dominant athletes are from decades ago. And a lot of the training from decades ago, it may look simple on paper, but it is highly effective. And so as a coach, you want to be learning not just from current day, but you want to be able to blend your own experiences. You want to be able to pick up on pieces of information from decades ago. And same thing if you're a serious athlete and you're kind of doing your own research on this. So food for thought on books to learn from and you should always be reading. I'm pretty shocked at how many coaches don't have a, a base of knowledge with uh anything that's outside of maybe the most popular, you know, YouTube people or maybe the most popular speakers at the NSA conference and then they don't know anybody outside of there. You're doing a disservice to your own athletes by only learning from those, you know, kind of two resources. So that's it, guys. Uh, make sure that you subscribe. Hit the like button if you got comments or questions. Post those below and uh, go to ZachStrength.com to get your free newsletter. And links below for resources. People ask me about training and somebody was asking me about warm-ups for athletes. And, you know, if you're training athletes, the SSPC certification is what you want to get involved with, sspcoach.com. But there's links for those of you that just want training info. It's all below. Boom.